Welcome and good afternoon. This is Kamish Orr, and today I'm going to do a little recap or update on my Best of the Decades Tournament 1930s edition. Um, I did. Uh, I have a videos up of a couple of games that I played in this tournament, um, but I've played a couple more offline, and uh, just wanted to update everybody on where we're at with that. Um, so if we take a look at the tournament bracket, here's what we see. We see that the uh, Washington Nationals or Senators are up two games to none on the New York Yankees, the top seeded New York Yankees, surprisingly. We see that the Philadelphia Athletics and Detroit Tigers, 31 Philadelphia, Philadelphia Athletics and the 35 Detroit Tigers are tied at one game apiece. And then we just had a couple of games in the National League that I will update everyone on. So first one was here, uh, the 39 Cincinnati Reds at the 35 Chicago Cubs. The Cubs are the top-seeded team in the league, and they took this one. They, they are now up two games to none in that series as they won this one thanks to a couple of big innings in the fourth and fifth. Uh, Paul Derringer here uh, went six innings, but... He had a rough couple of innings there in the middle of the middle of the game here. In the fourth, uh, the Cubs had four straight singles to lead off the inning. And um, there was a fielder's choice in there. And then they had another single to score another run. They scored two runs that inning. The only reason that they got out of the inning uh, or that Cincinnati got out of that inning was because um, there was a fly out to... Uh, right and um, Goodman gunned down. Oh, who was it? It uh, gunned down Paul Cavaretta at the plate, or Phil Cavaretta, excuse me, at the plate. So that's the only reason they got out of that inning. The very next inning, Billy Herman let off the base hit, and Chuck Klein hit a two-run homer. And um, so they had another another three-run inning there. So that put them up six to two at that point. Uh, the Reds would score another run in the ninth, but by then the game was pretty well, uh, pretty well out of hand. So um, Chicago takes this one six to three, and as I said, they're up now two games to none in the uh, in that series. It's a best of five series. Um, then I just had a pretty crazy game between the New York Giants and the. I should say the 1934 New York Giants and the 1931 St. Louis Cardinals. The um, Giants had taken the first game of this series, even though the Cardinals are a higher seed, um, as you can see here. And these uh, seedings are based on the uh, ALO ratings um, for each team through Major League for Major League Baseball history up to I think the 2016 season. So I, I just basically took the five, top five teams um, in the American League and the top five teams in the National League, only allowing one entry per franchise. So that's how we, how we got here. But in any event, uh, St. Louis Cardinals um, were uh, up one to nothing heading in the fourth, and that's when Frankie Frisch actually collided with... Uh, collided out there with Gilbert. And uh, so he's going to be missing probably five or six games. I think six games is what the injury was, uh, thanks to that collision. So Frisch got pulled for, from the game there, uh, unfortunately. And uh, in the bottom of the fourth, though, Pepper Martin hit a two-run homer to put the Cardinals up three to nothing at that point. Uh, this uh, all against... Hal Schumacher. So Burley Grimes is the pitcher for the Cardinals. Um, he pitched pretty well. Um, then the sixth inning was pretty crazy as the Cardinals defense just was horrible. Uh, starting off with an error on uh, Sparky Adams to lead off the inning. Uh, Jojo Moore had a base hit. And um, Huey Critz actually sacrificed the two runners over. But then there were back-to-back -back errors after that from um, 
Travis Jackson and Flowers. Flowers had come in for Frisch at second base. And so they had back-to-back errors there. So three errors on the infield in this inning led to two unearned runs uh, that cut the Cardinals lead to three to two. The very next inning, they uh, the Giants would get another run when uh, George, George Watkins actually let off that inning with a double. And um, there was a sack fly in there after um, Watkins got moved over to third on the ground out to second base. So that tied the game three to three. In uh, heading into the top of the eighth, when Mel Ott hit a two-run homer to give the Giants the game the uh, the lead five to three at that point. So we headed to the bottom of the eighth. Schumacher still on the mound. He had only allowed three earned runs at that point. When the Giants had a little bit of bad defense of their own, as um. Jackson uh, made an error to lead off the inning. I think I said Jackson earlier. I meant Gilbert. Um, Gilbert was the Cardinals infielder that made the error. But anyway, uh, Jackson made the error to lead off the eighth there. Um, and Jim Bottomley walked later. And then Chick Hafey actually hit a, an RBI single to score Watkins. So there was an unearned run there for the Giants. They... Uh, Turned things over to Bowman, who actually retired the next two batters to get them out of the inning and keep their 5-4 to four lead. Um, the ninth was pretty quiet. Uh, bottom of the ninth, though, uh, the Cardinals threatened again, uh, getting a couple of base hits. And with two outs, George Watkins actually hit a triple to tie the game in the bottom of the ninth. So bottom of the ninth, two outs, and Watkins hits a triple to tie the game at five at that point. So the Cardinals uh, ended up tying things up in the bottom of the ninth. Heading to the 10th uh, with Lindsey in for the Cardinals, uh, Lindsey, after retiring Bill Terry in a ground out, walked the next three batters to load the bases. Uh, the Cardinals brought the infield in, and Watkins, you know, you'll notice George Watkins is on each of these teams because he played for each of these teams. Uh, he hit a grounder to first base, and the first baseman, uh, Collins, Ripper Collins, actually threw home to get the force out, to give them two down, and they got out of that inning, actually, without allowing any runs. Then the bottom of the 10th, Bottomley let off the walk, his third walk of the game, actually, and Chick Hafey came up and hit a two-run walk-off homer as the Cardinals took this one 7-5. to five. Crazy back-and-forth game. Uh, really poor defense led to three unearned runs in this one. And then just some weird, weird stuff as the Giants could not score a run with the bases loaded and one out thanks to three straight walks from Lindsey. Uh, in any event, this tied up the series. And if we head over to the tournament bracket, we can see that the Cardinals and Giants series is tied at one game apiece. These are all, in this round, these are all best of five series. This is a double elimination tournament from this point on. So uh, teams that lose, so if the Yankees end up losing here to the to Washington, uh, they'll drop down to the loser's bracket here. Um, so uh, we are uh, now at a travel day for these teams where they will head to the other ballpark, uh, for the next two games before coming back to the higher seeded team's home home ballpark for game five if needed. So that's where things are at in the best of the decades tournament here. Um, I wanted to take a look also at the stats. So if you head over to baseballmaelstrom.com, you will uh, actually, the homepage looks like this. And if you click on best of the 30s tournament, you can see a little a write-up and recap on each game. I haven't done the latest game, the Giants-Cardinals game yet. I haven't done the recap on that. But you can uh, follow the action. You can click and see the score sheets and box scores. You can see the tournament bracket. You can see the past recaps. And if you click up here, there's a stats um, button that you can click that will take you to the stats for the league. And so let's take a look at those real quick here. Uh, I'm going to... Increase the size so you can see it a little bit better. 
So Washington Nationals, why did they why have they played seven games? Well, because they had they were in the play in round. Um, they were in the play in round prior to their two games with New York. So uh, we can see they've won three straight. They won their last play in game, of course, which uh, was game was a game five that I have broadcast here. So you can check out that video. Uh, and then they won their first first two uh, games in New York, actually. So they're going to be traveling back to Washington to play the next two with a two-game-to-none advantage. And we can see why the Yankees have lost those two games. They're only hitting 203 in those two games. Uh, and they have a 350 ERA with their pitching staff, which isn't that bad, but the 203 batting average is really hurting them. Uh, best hitting team, of course, is very small sample size. The Philadelphia Athletics are hitting 338 as a team, but that's only in two games. So I wouldn't make too much out of that. Uh, Yankees, of course, uh, are hitting 203. They're the only team without a home run. Uh, they haven't hit a home run in their two games. Um, not a lot of stolen bases here. Uh, pretty Pretty low stolen base rates which there weren't a lot of stolen bases then anyway, or a handful, but not, not a huge number. And if we get to the National League, we see, uh, see much the same. Um, the Reds have played six games because they were in the play-in round. Um, but at the top here, 2-0, and the Chicago Cubs have yet to lose a game. They're hitting 353 as a team with a, an ERA of four. The Pirates, who are eliminated, um, were one and three. They lost three games out of four to the Reds. And look at this ERA, seven fifteen ERA. That's I'm sure uh, has a lot to do with why they lost that series. And uh, you can also check out the leaderboard. So if we go to the leaders here and see the batting leaders, this is overall batting leaders. Billy Herman through two games is hitting seven fifty. He was three for four in each of those first two games. So you're just tearing it up there. There's a lot of good hitters right now, but again, very small sample size so far. We've only played, in some cases, a, a few games. Um, even the team that's played the most games only played, what did I say, uh, seven. Uh, Mel Ott's on top for slugging, tied with Billy Herman from, the, uh, from Chicago. And uh, let's take a look here. Um, there are three players that have two homers, including Mel Ott. He uh, Ott homered in the first game and the second game. And so uh, that's that's interesting. Uh, Frank McCormick, though, is leading an RBI with 10 for Cincinnati. Now, again, Cincinnati has played more games because of their play-in, both because of the play-in round. But that's still 10, 10 RBI is, is pretty good. Uh, so that's on the hitting side. Let's take a look at the pitching side. Again, most of these pitchers, or excuse me, I'll go to leaders here and pitching leaders. Most of these pitchers have only pitched, you know, at most two starts, and that's if they were in the play-in round. Um, but here's here's where you kind of see the the leaders here in terms of uh, ERA and and wins and and. That kind of thing. Strikeouts. Lefty Grove is leading with 12 strikeouts for Boston. That's in two starts, I believe. Um, he's also lost two games for Boston, so that's interesting. Um, I may have to check on that to make sure that's accurate, because I don't know that... No, I think that, I think that is accurate, because he played in the play-in round and then played in... Yeah, if we go over here, yeah, they, they were in the play-in round. And so he had two starts in the play-in round. And unfortunately lost both of those starts. So that's where we get that. But very interesting stuff. Um, as I said, if you're curious to check out the stats, you can come over here to BaseballMaelstrom.com. You can click on any of the teams. Here's the Yankees, for example. See, uh, again, uh, Joe DiMaggio is hitting one... Uh, 125 he's one for eight so with no extra base hits he struck out once he hasn't walked so you know i'm sure he has he has time to turn that around but so far uh so far he's not doing too so hot but you can click on each team you can see the stats you can see 
team highs and lows, player highs, recaps, how they do versus each opponent. Um, all sorts of stats here from Ballstat. And uh, yeah, so hopefully you find that a little interesting. Let me shrink this back down. And so uh, I am actually going to be playing, starting my payoff pitch uh, season two of that league. And so um, the next week of tabletop games will be payoff pitch. But then I will be returning and I'll just kind of alternate every other week with these leagues. One of them is going to be the best of the decades tournament that you see here. And the other one's going to be my payoff pitch season two league. So uh, be watching for that. Uh, if you're curious about anything, have any comments or anything like that, just leave those down below. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, have a great evening.